Hello travelers, Boardman21 here, and today got a leveling guide, a 1-75 to Otter Bomber for you. A lot of people have been asking for an updated version of this. Not a whole lot has changed, but since we've done the last one, which was almost two years ago, a lot has changed in terms of graphics, optimizations, and of course a little bit in the Devouring Orb skill tree. There's also a lot of new unique, so there's a lot of new options you can do for this build, different ways to play it. But just wanted to update the guide to show you guys that it's completely viable. The key aspects of this build is that as a beginner character, especially the first time on a fresh league, this build does not require any uniques to get it up and going, and it comes together rather early and scales well into the end game with lots of options and different ways to play it once you get there, which is really nice and makes it really easy. There's really no wrong way to build it. But with that said, I have this 1-75 to guide set up as usual. We did it live on stream. We did it on the online server. At times, I was in a party with others, and I save all my passive and skill points for when the time calls for me to put them in, and then I record that portion so you can see exactly what I did, where I put them as I went through it. In the description below, there will be the timestamps for all the breakdown points, as well as some gameplay afterwards just to see how the build looked at that point. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, Travelers, we're level 4, which means we get to spec into our first specialization skill, which is going to be Warpath, going to help us do a lot of AoE and just quick damage early on. For that, right now, the main thing you want to go for is Void and Physical Resist. Those will be the two things I'm working on. I haven't got any yet. It is early, but Void is going to be a big thing you run into. For skills, first skill, we're going to go ahead and spec into Warpath, and with it, we're going to be doing as much Void damage as possible. We'll probably be wearing a two-handed weapon for most of it. So we'll specialize that and put one point into Void Spiral. And then for passives, we got two of them. We're going to put them both into Juggernaut for that additional strength, which gives us percent increased damage with Warpath. And then this also gives us some Void Resist, which is really nice early on. And then for the inventory, again, the only thing I found so far is a pair of boots, which just has a little bit of armor for us. But that'll be it until level 8 for the next update. All right, Travelers, we're now level 8, which means we're going to spec into our second skill. But first, the character sheet, we got our Void and Physical that we're still going for. Still need a bit more Void. But again, when you're playing with other people, it's really easy to get carried through. And we are in Softcore right now, but we are still Deathless. For skills, like I said, we've got that second skill we're going to go ahead and spec into. It's going to be Rebuke, but we're going to put passive points in before we do that. We got three points for Warpath, all three going into Void Spiral for that Void damage. We are wearing a two-handed weapon, so it is doubled for us. And for the passives, five points. We're going to throw three of them into Juggernaut for that Void Resist and Strength, and then two into Armor Clad. We have additional armor and take less damage from nearby enemies. And this will unlock Rebuke so we can spec into that. It's kind of our oh crap button. It'll reduce the damage you take by 80% and it lasts for about two seconds. First point, we're going to go ahead and put it in Regenerative Shell for that health regen. And then for the inventory, again, just items with anything that's got resistance on, it's going to be really nice for you. Void and physical, again, main things you want to go for. And then a two-handed weapon, basically with as much flat added damage as you can get for good early on damage. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 12. All right, Travelers, we are now level 12, still working on our Void and Physical Resist. It is getting a bit up there. Would like to get that capped here pretty soon. And then, of course, once we finish up with the next couple of chapters and get through the Temple, Necrotic is going to be a big one that you want to start working on as a third one. 
For skills, we got one more point for Warpath. We're gonna go ahead and cap out the Void Spiral for that melee Void damage. We are using a two-hander. Again, that's double, just some nice early on damage before we switch over to Spell. And then for Rebuke, three more points, one going into Regenerative Shell, and two going into Augmented Plating, so we have additional armor while we are channeling it. And of course, remember, that is just our oh crap button. We just use it when we're about to die because it will reduce the damage that you're taking. For passives, five more points. We're gonna cap out the armor clad for that damage reduced from nearby enemies and then the additional armor and then the last two points both into juggernaut for some more void resistance and that strength for our increased melee damage with warpath and then for our inventory nothing special no uniques found yet again just going for as much flat damage that you can get on your weapon a two-hander is going to do the most with warpath and then just resistance is on the rest of it and i'll see you guys at level 20 when we spec into our third skill All right, Travelers, we are now level 25. We've chosen our mastery, the Void Knight, and we get to spec into our third skill, which once we put passives into the Void Knight tree, will be Devouring Orb, although we won't be switching completely over to spell damage just yet, as Devouring Orb will need a few more points. So for our resistances, Void and Physical has been the main thing, but going into Chapter 4, which we're going into after we've chosen our mastery, Necrotic is a big one that we definitely want at this point. For skills, we're just going to keep specking into Warpath and Rebuke. We got four more points for Warpath. We're going to put all four of them into Unchained so that we can channel longer. I do have a plus one skill point, which isn't reflected on it, but I'm wearing an item with plus one levels. That's why we can actually put in the full five. But again, it's not reflected here, but this is actually level 10. For Rebuke, we got five more points. We're going to throw two more of them in Augmented Plating for that increased armor. One point in Protective Legacy, so we get a buff afterwards. One point in Burst of Speed, so that we get the additional attack speed and move speed on the end of it. And then one point in Solemn Vow to keep that duration just a bit longer. And then again, the third skill is going to be anything you want at this point, but it's going to be Devouring Orb for us once we get five more passive points. For passive points, we got 16. We're going to finish out the Sentinel since you have to have 20 in here. We're going to cap out the Juggernaut, and then we're going to put 5 points in Fearless for that Vitality, as Devouring Orb and Smite will get damaged with that extra Vitality. 7 points there. We need 20 total. And then we have 8 more points, which again will all go into Void Knight. We're going to throw 6 of them in Temporal Corruption for that Void damage, especially with Smite which will be our main damage skill with Devouring Orb, and two points in Abyssal Endurance for that Void Resistance and Physical Resist. Again, at this point, with your items, try and get as much Necrotic as well going into Chapter 4. And then for our items, we do have a few Uniques on that we found. This is where we have the plus one to Warpath. We have Arboral Circuit for that extra move speed and that chance for the uh, tree to uh, taunt everything around us. The Tongue of Arborant isn't doing anything for us really other than the All Attributes, which is kind of nice. But you can wear anything you want. Again, Physical Resist... Necrotic Resist and Void Resist main things that you want. And we'll be switching over to Spell Damage when we do Devouring Orb and Smite, so do be looking for a two-handed staff at this point with Void and Spell Damage on it. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 30 when we make the swap.
Explorers. We are now level 30, which means we're going to spec into our third specialization skill, but we also have enough passive points at this point to switch over to our spell damage, Devouring Orb, and Smite instead of using Warpath. So make sure you have a two-handed staff or at least a one-handed wand before you do this, otherwise your damage will be really bad. Make sure you put that on. First for the character sheet, we're still working on the Void and the Physical. Right now in Chapter 4, Necrotic and Physical are the main things we really, really want, so work on those to help increase your survivability. We're going to do passive points first so that we unlock Devouring Orb. We got seven points. We're going to throw two more in Abyssal Endurance and then the last five in Void Bolts. This will give us Spell Void damage with both Devouring Orb and Smite. That will unlock Devouring Orb for us. We're going to go ahead and get rid of Warpath, and we're going to throw in our Devouring Orb. For Devouring Orb, our first points, we're going to put one in Dark Moon so that it orbits around us. And then we also want one in Void Adept for more global void damage, but we want the one in Hollow Orbs to increase the duration, and this will just allow you to have more of them active at once. We also want to go with Man Efficiency, so we're going to work our way down to Sightless Star. You also want to get into the Abyssal Orb, as this is going to increase your damage. So you can choose either way you want to go first. I'm going to go ahead with one point in Abyssal Emission for that Abyssal Orb, just so we get a little bit more damage out of them, and then start working down towards Sightless Star. So one point in Abyssal Rush. Then for Rebuke, we got two more points. We're going to go ahead and max out the Augmented Plating, and then one more point in Solemn Vow for that buff duration. And then for our third skill, we're going to go with Smite. This will be the main thing you're casting, besides the Devouring Orb. We're going to go ahead and put three points in Pillars of Light, and then two points in Sacrifice for 100% more damage with it. This will consume some of your health, but we will be eventually putting more passive points in to leech void damage, and this skill itself has been converted to void thanks to where we put the points in our passive tree. And then for items, again, remember to put on a two-handed staff or a one-handed wand just so you get some spell damage, otherwise your damage will be really bad right off the bat. But again, for your resistance, necrotic, void, physical, those are the main things you want at this point. For damage, increased void damage, increased spell damage, and critical strike chance will really help you do more damage at this point in the game. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 40 for the next one. Travelers, we are now level 41. Time to make a couple of changes. We're going to get rid of Rebuke. We're going to put Anomaly on now that we have enough passive points for that. That's going to give us a lot more Leech. It's also going to give us Critical Strike Chance, so it'll be really nice to have. Uh, at this point, we're in Chapter 6 or 7 now, I believe, but Cold Resistance is a big thing that you're going to want on top of the Physical. For passives, we're going to throw those in first. got nine more points. We're going to put them all into the Void Knight. We're going to go ahead and cap out the World Eater for that Void Damage Leech's Health. We're going to put one more point in Abyssal Endurance for that Physical and Void Resist. Then we're going to go ahead and throw five points in Renouncement so that Smite scales with Vitality now. And it'll get more Void Spell Damage based on that Vitality as well as we're getting five Vitality with this. So that'll be really nice. And then at this point, we're going to put two points in Echoing Strikes, but you can start putting points in Paladin if you like. We are going to eventually get to Sigils of Hope and use that for the flat spell Void damage, which is going to help the Meteors, the Devouring Orb, and the Smite that we do. But for now, we're just going to work on that Echo Chant. Then for skills, like I said, we're going to drop Rebuke and throw in Anomaly. And then for Anomaly, we're going to put one point in Void Touched, one point in Time Bubble, and then we're going to put four points in Temporal Mastery so that it's 
uh, gonna have a longer duration and then we're gonna have it so it's actually cast on us so it'll follow us around and we'll always have it then eventually we're gonna want the critical strike chance the cast speed as well as all of the leech that you can get two more points for devouring orb both of them gonna go into chaotic turret so that we get more abyssal orbs just means more hits which is gonna be nice because when we do get to our 100 percent crit that's gonna be more meteors having a chance to be procked might two more points both of them going into atonement so we're sacrificing less health and then for shield rush We've got seven more points. The only thing I'm really worried about is getting that rush mastery so that we are using less mana with it. You can put the other points anywhere you want. I'm just going to leave it as is right here because that's just how I like it. And then for items, again, two-handed staff for the damage. You want increased void damage, increased spell damage. And then for everything else, just all of your resistances. And that'll keep you alive. Again, at this point, you want physical and cold, but just getting all of your resistance up as well as possibly even some critical strike avoidance is going to keep you alive the most. And then for idols, I don't have enough uh, slots open for my 1x4s I want to wear, but getting anything with void mana efficiency or void damage on it is going to be huge. Uh, the, one of the best ones, you can get increased damage from echoes and you can get void damage as a suffix on it. This is a huge damage boost. On top of that, because you're getting extra echo damage, that secondary proc of smite or devouring orb is just going to do a ton of damage. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 50 when we spec into our fifth skill, which will be Sigils of Hope. All right, travelers, we are now level 50. At this point, we're in the monolith, so we are doing some end of the monolith echoes, and you want to basically get all of your resistance. You don't know what you're really going to run into, but for this timeline, especially once you get to the boss for Abomination, make sure that you have your necrotic maxed out. So that's going to be the main thing that you want to work towards. And then again, for this character, our damage is going to be spell damage and void damage, main things you want to go for. For skills, I got three more points for Devouring Orb. We're going to cap out the Sightless Start for that mana efficiency. And then we're going to cap out Chaotic Turret for getting as many Abyssal Orbs as we can possibly get. And then for Anomaly, we have nine more points. Going to go ahead and put two of them into Manipulation. And then we're going to put four of them into Time Eater for the Health Leech. We really want that for our survivability. And then we're going to have three more points. We want one in Time Lord so that the bubble follows us everywhere that we go. And then lingering memory so that when it does disappear we do get the effects for two more seconds and the very last point into void mall for that increased health leech this is just going to help our survivability while we have it three more points for smite we're going to max out the atonement for that health cost and then two more points in conviction so that it has a higher crit chance remember we are building towards getting a hundred percent crit chance with this build so that once we get the meteor belt we're procking as many meteors as possible for Thank shield rush we got six points we don't need those points at all. Feel free to put them anywhere that you want. I'm not even going to use them. I have it set up just the way that I want. Our last skill is going to be Sigils of Hope. We don't have enough points in Paladin yet. You got to have 15 points. So once we do that, I'll put it in. However, you can use another skill. You can go Rebuke if you want like an Oh Crap, You're About to Die button. You can do Volatile Reversal if you want to like get mana back or extra cast speed. But I'm just going to leave it blank for right now. And for passives, we got nine points. Again, like I said, for Sigils of Hope, we're going to need 15, but we're going to go ahead and put these nine into Paladin. Eight of them into Defiance. 
This is just going to give us that elemental resist that we really need, and then one point in honor is going to give us that block chance. Now, if you do run a shield with the one hand, feel free once you get one more point in here to put points in heaven fire, but I'll be putting my points into blinding light for the endurance since we will be running a two-handed staff. And then for items, nothing's changed here. You're still going for a two-handed weapon. We are level 50 now. The moon staff is going to be the next upgrade we do. And it's going to come with a lot more base spell damage. And then on it, again, spell damage, void damage, critical strike chance. Those are the main things that you want to go for. And on the rest of your gear, whatever resistance and added health that you want just for survivability. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 55 for the next one.
travelers. We are now level 58. It's time for another update. We are going to spec into our fifth skill after we put some passive points in and unlock the Sigils of Hope. Again, at this point, you want all of your resistance, and then you also want to start be working in towards your critical strike avoidance. That's the next thing that I really want to get capped. Getting to 60% endurance is also important, but again, making sure that you have all of your resistances capped at this point is a the best thing that you can go for. Especially on the first mono, Necrotic is going to be a really big one that you run into. For passives, we got eight points. We're going to throw six of them in the Paladin to unlock the Sigils of Hope so that we can spec into it. One point in Valor for that health, and then five points in Blinding Light. This is going to give us 10% Endurance, which is really nice. We're at 30% now, so we only need to get 30% on gear to cap that out. The last two points are going to both go into Void Knight. We're going to start capping out Eternal Form. This gives us Vitality, which is plus spell damage with Smite, and then it's also going to give us increased health. Remember, Vitality gives flat health. The increased health is huge. That's a big boost in health that we'll get from this node, so it'll really help your survivability early on. Then for skills, we got two more points for Devouring Orb. We're going to go ahead and throw both of them into Void Adept. This is going to give us more melee or more void damage overall globally. This also gives us mana regen, and eventually we do plan on getting 90 plus vitality, which would be huge for the build. That's total endgame, and that's going to double these stats, which will be huge for us. So we're going to put those points there. For Anomaly, we got two more points. We're going to put one more in Void Mole for some more Leech, and then we're going to put one point in Decimation for that increased Critical Strike chance. We really want to get that maxed out as we want as much Critical Strike chance as possible. So once we get the belt, we can proc more Meteors. For Smite, two more points, both of them going into Conviction for that base crit chance so we can crit a lot more often with it. Shield Rush, again, put points wherever you want. I'm done filling it out. This is all that you actually need right here, but you can build into doing more damage with it, the Echo Damage, the Hit Damage, whatever at the end of it. Build it however you like. And then, of course, for the last one, like I said, Sigils of Hope. We're building this into Void Sigils of Hope so that we can get the spell damage and increased Void damage, and then also a ton of armor. So three points in Empowering Sigils. Or we're going to put four points, one point in Last Wish so that you can summon it on kill so you don't have to manually doing it as mana will be a bit of an issue. And then two points in Decree of Flame. Now remember, once we turn this into Void, this will be added Void damage per active sigil, which will be huge for us. So we're going to need two more points. Once we make that Void, your damage is going to spike by a lot. And then for the inventory at this point, we are wearing a Crystal Staff. You can start wearing these at level 58. So we just put it on. Like I said, we're level 58. This gives you a good amount of spell damage at this point. And then increased spell void damage or spell damage and increased void damage are going to be two, the two big things that you want. Um, we have melee critical strike on this, so obviously it's not ideal, but it is a bunch of damage for us. And then for idols, you can get vitality, echo damage when a skill echoes, void damage increase, or any resistances that you're missing will be the best idols that you can have in any slot. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 65 for the next one.
Alright, travelers, we are now level 65. We're at the second timeline, and we are still working on getting our resistances all capped down, although this timeline is mostly void, so we've had that capped since early on in the game. Still getting a little more necrotic, and then poison in our elementals, the last thing to work on. For defense, we do have the woven flesh on, so we do have our 100% critical strike avoidance, but we are still working on getting that last 30% of endurance, just so that we take a little less damage, especially at that low life threshold. Then for skills, we got one more point for Devouring Orb. I'm going to go ahead and throw it into Void Adept. We are still working towards that 90 Vitality. We have about 40 right now, so still got a long ways to go, but we are still early in the endgame. For Anomaly, one more point here. Going to throw it into Decimation for that increased Critical Strike chance. Smite, one more point. Going to fish out that Conviction for the massive base crit chance that we have. Again, for Shield Rush, you can put points wherever you want in here. I'm just leaving it blank because right here is all that you need to have it set up to use. And then for Sigils, 11 more points. We're going to cap out the Decree of Flame and then put one point in Sigils of Despair. So it is now Void Damage increases that we're getting. And since we have three of them right now, that's up to 45% increased Void Damage on top of getting the 4 plus 3 for 7 flat Void Damage added to our spells and all attacks. But it's going to be nice for Smite. It's going to be nice for Devouring Orb. And then, of course, once we have Meteor coming down, that will get added to it as well. The other nine points, we're going to throw two of them into Iron Sigils for some armor per active sigil. Four points into Enduring Hope for increased duration. And then a point into Tetragram, which means we're going to be able to get four now. So we'll get up to 60% void damage and 28 flat added void. And then the last two points here, you can kind of put them wherever you want. I'm going to cap out the Empowering Sigils for the damage granted and one more in Iron Sigils. For the increased armor the last two points we'll put one into iron sigils and then we'll cap out the duration as having them last as long as possible is a super nice passive buff and then for passives we got seven more points we're going to put one point in void corruption so that our critical strike multiplier is increased by the amount of points we put in void knight which is where most of our points are going then we're going to cap out echoing strikes and then the last three points in eternal form for more vitality and increased health and currently, the only unique that we are wearing is the Woven Flesh. Eventually, we'll switch this out once we get a nice chest piece that's got spell void damage and increased void damage and probably increased and flat health on it as well. And the other prefix, probably going to go with Vitality, hopefully with a Tier 6 or Tier 7 on that. A weapon, still a two-handed staff. You can go one-handed wand with shield and then at the same time put more points in Paladin for the flat spell damage with shield but we're gonna go two-handed since that's all we're gonna need to get to the crit that we want and then everything else just get the resistances that you need increase spell damage increase void damage for damage and then a mana regen as you see fit if you're struggling with mana at all and that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 75 for the last one
All right, travelers, we are now level 75. Uh, this build is now technically complete for the leveling version. We have all five skills. They're going to have 19 skill points in each of them. It's all basically finished out. The one thing I am missing is we have not had the Harbinger of Star's Belt drop yet for the Meteor to proc. So when that does drop for us and I put that together, I'll do an end game guide build for it. But for right now, we're just going to go over what this leveling guide has done. Like I said, we've got 1 to 75. Our resistances are almost capped. We have the Woven Flesh on for the 100%. Critical strike avoidance, we're still at the 30% endurance. And then uh, right now would be a good, uh, a great time to have all of your resistance capped. However, we haven't done that with some of them yet. It's kind of been hit and miss as we have changed up gear. For skills, we got one more point for Devouring Ore. We're going to cap out the Void Adept for that more Void Damage and the increased mana. Again, this will be doubled once we hit 90 Vitality. At the moment, we're around 50. So we still have a little ways to go with that. We can get more vitality on the idols we have. We can get it on our gear. We can get more on our weapon. So we will be able to hit 90 at some point. We just haven't hit it yet. We're still in that leveling process. For Anomaly, one more point. It's going into Decimation for that Critical Strike Avoidance. We are still working towards that 100% crit. For Smite, the next point that we have is going to go ahead and go into the Blinding Flash. This is just more hit damage versus Blinded, and you will now have a... 10% chance to blind on hit, so you will have that chance for 10% more hit damage against enemies. For Shield Rush, like I said before, I've already put all the points in that you need for this. The only thing that matters is getting Dark Rush so that you do not have to have a shield. You can still have a two-handed staff on while you use it, and then we reduce the mana cost. After that, all the other points, it doesn't matter where you put them. Put them wherever you want. I'm not even going to put them in because they can literally go anywhere, so it's your choice. And then for sigils, we got one more point. Going to cap out the Enduring Hope to maximize that duration so we have them last as long as possible. Don't forget, you can manually summon these, and then they are also, you'll have that 6% chance for them to summon when you kill an enemy. Then for passive, we have 10 more passive points, all of them going into Void Knight. We're going to go ahead and cap out the Eternal Form. This will give us more Vitality, which will give us that flat spell damage with Smite, and this also gives us that increased health. And then the last five points that we have are all going to go into Time Legion. And this is for that Echo Chance. The reason we want that is the last point. The next point we get is going to go into Avatar of the Regret, which will give us even more Echo Chance. That's going to allow you to double cast both Devouring Orb and Smite more often. And then for items, like I said, the only thing we're missing in this build that I really wanted to have that we don't have yet is the Harbinger of Stars. It's a new unique and it allows you to cast Meteor, no matter what class you're on. That Meteor that you cast will be procced on a percentage chance of your crit. Now, we are going to build to 100% crit. So, like I said, when we get the end game build all done and we have that built, I'll put down another one. But the nice thing about that Meteor, it's going to do great damage. It has AoE and it's going to get all of that flat added void damage that you have from all of the passive and void knight. And then it also, even though it doesn't have the void tag, will get the increased void spell damage that you have. Of course, the one-handed or two-handed staff or wand that you're using also has adaptive spell damage, which will apply to Meteor. So the damage with Meteor will be really good. Once we get that, it's going to be huge for damage. It also comes with some DR for every time that you've procced it in the last four seconds. It's going to be huge. So once we get that on this build, I will put out an endgame build for that. But that's going to be it for this build. And you are now level 75. You can continue on. But like I said, that's it. Hope you had a good time leveling.